yes. not only the dick, and then dick. If, it, dick plus. if emotion, yeah, what my dick is getting <laughs> sucked. Ugh, why? That's automatically gay. I'm I'm homosexual now, and it's like, oh, it's, it's you with your body and your cock. Like it's great. Like love yourself. I've had 19 years of the opposite. Mm-hmm. That that is a lot. And it's like they're getting paid for it. Penetrating her with my love. Welcome, welcome. We have another amazing episode today of P.S. I Love Me, and today I am interviewing my angel friend Gabriel Collender. <laughs> who is an activator for dedicated, committed men in partnership and a professional poker player. Having done extensive work to overcome his own porn addiction, he now helps men to let go of the fake fantasy of porn and guide them into the mastery of their sexual energy so they can show up powerfully in their relationships. And Gabriel is also a a long friend of mine. We met in Bali many, many Mm -hmm. moons ago at a a contact dance, I do believe. We met. It is true. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Our bodies met. um, And since then, we have had many amazing experiences, including me officiating the marriage of him and his amazing wife Sophia who is in a previous episode you can catch the rebel queen and so it is only right that today we have the magic and the wisdom that is Gabriel Cullender speaking to you all so thank you so much for coming Gabriel oh wow that that is an intro and I I feel the love I appreciate it. And it's, uh, it's exciting to be here. I remember I shared with you, I was like, I feel a little nervous. Like this is, this is getting out there and doing the things. And I I feel like this is the perfect place to do it. So looking forward to diving in. Yeah. And so Gabriel and I, to give you a little backstory, we have had many of these, this conversation we're going to (laughs) have, we have had in many different ways over the years. Mm. And I yeah. find it so fascinating. The way Gabriel asks questions and holds space and listens is such a healing thing in itself. So I'm so excited mm. to bring Gabriel to your ears. And <laughs> yeah, this topic is so juicy. I'm very excited. We just had a little drop in before about, you know, what we want to, and we're both like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 they were like wait we should have started recording okay we got to get the podcast started now. <laughs> let's just hit record and see what happens <laughs> yeah that's the best way to do it yeah so Gabriel Colander, tell us a bit more about yourself and how you've ended up doing what you do you, you heard the little bio at the start uh some things to add on to that is i i live in bali currently with my amazing wife sophia who she know reference and also married us together we got two cute little cats milo and mira and uh i just i try and live my days enjoying every moment as much as possible even well digging through the murky shadow shit that loves to come up in life if you're doing the work and really looking at uh, the things that you want to improve on within yourself and showing up in relationship uh, in a authentic and very real and grounded way. So yeah, I just, I just try and enjoy it. I love using like the sauna. I love swimming laps, hanging out with friends, couple dinners, um, putting out YouTube content. I'm looking forward to doing more of that. I love, I love sharing about uh, the things that I coach in and, and what I really uh, have gotten a lot of value from in my own life and just putting that out into the world. It really inspires me a lot. And Gina actually is, is one of those big inspirations in my life because we've had so many conversations. And I remember when we first met, like she was still a banging ass awesome coach doing her thing and she's continued to up level uh over the years so you know shout out to you for for kind of being a a person that i that i look up to in that regard and uh yeah that's that that's a little bit about me and what i what i get up to right thank you so here is another example uh ladies and gentlemen of an incredible conscious man um Mm. you know when I when I think of all the conscious men around me all the men who are really committed to showing up to themselves uh for this work for this evolution you are right up there with the best Mm. of them doing the damn thing so thank you for (laughs) being that in this world and yeah made that ripple out to many 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 more men and so this topic today 
is huge. It's huge. And I didn't realize actually just how much this was affecting me, affecting my relationships, affecting the sex that I was having, just affecting self-esteem in general for the whole world. It's huge. (laughs) Just the whole world. No biggie. Yeah. So tell us more. Well, I think the, the biggest thing that most people don't think about is porn is everywhere literally like you you look on even me like i still consume a lot of youtube i I haven't watched any porn myself for the last last couple of years when i made that conscious decision because i was like it doesn't bring value into my life and actually detracts a lot especially uh trying to not trying wanting to succeed at the best of my ability to show up in my relationship it's so freaking hard to allow yourself to be satisfied with one woman if you're looking at hundreds or not hundreds but like 50 to 100 videos trying to find the one that you like and just tricking your brain. We can go more into the science stuff, but it, it triggers this dopamine effect of a new sexual partner every single time you look at a new video because your lizard brain doesn't know the difference and you're just like, ah, ah, ah. and it just gives you this, this drug hit that you don't even realize that you're getting and it hooks you. And for me, I did that for 19 years, uh, which is a very long time. Um, <laughs> and it's, it's had quite an impact in my life and I'm still unraveling uh, you know, letting go of, of those, those habit patterns. And a lot of people don't have the cognitive awareness that they're even acting in a certain way due to the porn that they're consuming. There's like, I'm into this. This is what I like. This is my thing. This is my kink. And just lifting the veil a little bit to have a conversation around it, to say, why do I like this? Why is this so important to me? Because the impact it's had on me in my life and, and my relationship and sexual connection with my wife, Sophia has been astronomical. And I want more people to be able to have that positive impact, to have that conversation and just figure out what they really, truly authentically desire in the bedroom and even outside of the bedroom. Cause I could see a situation where even myself, I could have ended up with someone that fit all of the, the sexual prerequisites of like, I need this, 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 this in this perfect way, which is what porn trains you to to think like you need all the things that has to be perfect or you click off the video and you go to another one. Uh, And and instead, I'm so grateful that I was able to one, find a woman who very much meets me in the bedroom and is, is amazing in that regard, but also has so much more to bring to the table And it's not just about that. It's not just about, ooh, I need this hit. I need this exact um, made to order recipe for sex. And that's the thing that matters. I know that's a bit of a bit of a long winded reply there, but I I think, yeah, just awareness. there's, There's so much in there. There's so much in there. And I'm, I mean, porn is a taboo, um, especially between women. I think Mm. in some of my Mm. groups, we do broach all of this. We, we talk a lot about becoming multi-orgasmic. We talk a lot about, um, pleasure practices and sacred sensuality and, you know, sex is such a huge part of self-love. It's such a huge part of life. It's such a huge part of manifestation. Mm. And so sometimes when I mention anything to do with porn, or sex even, and I am English, Mm. so um, a lot of my (laughs) clients are English as well, Uh, people will literally just tense up and clench up and just kind (laughs) of want to die. So it would be interesting to just actually, for you, our listeners, to just check Mm. in with yourself. Have you ever watched porn? Have you ever desired to watch porn? Have you ever felt shame around watching porn? Have you ever felt you know, really turned on around watching porn with someone or something or on your own or whatever, and just see where you're at and how that might have changed over the years. Because ultimately, you know, we're all about releasing shame and there's no right or wrong. Um, personally, I have, I used to watch porn. I was definitely watching a way too much porn in the times when I, in my twenties, when which also massively correlates to a a period of lower self-esteem, a lot of partying, feeling really unfulfilled in many ways. And porn was like junk food to me. And it was very unsatisfying. It made me feel sick, actually. But it was that like thrill. It was that, you know, dopamine hit. 
the dopamine so, hit. Yeah. Yeah. And the other thing I wanted to just touch on is that what you said then is really profound. You know, you bet you found yourself in an amazing relationship with our amazing Sophia and uh, I'm calling it our Sophia there. because That's okay. I think she'll appreciate that. She loves you. And, um, she, yeah. And just saying, you know, she's not just going to do everything I tell her and want her to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and actually that wouldn't be a woman in her full power and self-love. And that wouldn't be, yeah. that would be a people pleaser. That would be just doing what she thinks she has to do, which I think is very prominent for women in the past. Mm. Yeah, that's a really good point. And I mean, there's, there's a couple of things I, I want to touch up, but I'll go on the last one. Okay. I, the, the, the idea, because I, I know you have a lot of women that, that watch this podcast, even though I, I primarily work with men. Um, where they, they, they fear, and also talking with Sophia, she works with so many women, you know, in, in, in this general kind of stuff. Women are so afraid to say no to a man that they're with because they fear that he's not going to love them anymore. He's not going to be okay with them having a boundary. He's not going to accept that. And he's just going to leave. Mm-hmm. And I feel like it is actually by them saying no to something that really truly feels like a no. And there's a, there's a balance, right? Pushing Mm. your edge, being willing to explore new things, saying, I'm not sure about this perhaps instead of saying, no, there's no way I'm I'm going to do that um, is, is definitely different there. But if something is a no, you express that you express your truth. And if a man really loves you, cares about you and is dedicated to the relationship, it's never just going to be like, well, I'm out of here. Sorry. That, that, that's not going to happen because that guy's a dick and you don't want to actually be in a relationship with a dick. That's just the reality of, well, I, I think what you most women do want a dick in there, but yes, not just, but primarily. not only the dick, yes. not only the More dick, than and a then dick. If it, dick plus. If emotion. Yeah. If he's emotionally a dick, that's a right. problem. You want him to be able to embody his cock. And the mm-hmm. actual physical presence, the energetic presence of bringing that and be able to, you know, activate that pleasure within you while, while also activating his own. And I mean, there, there's a lot that men can do. I mean, we, we can have 50 orgasms just like women can, but that's, yes, we, we, can. we can get into that later, yeah. later in the, in, in the podcast. But um, yeah, having boundaries, in my opinion, is actually, I find it really sexy when Sophia is like, hey, like, I'm not feeling this right now, or I'm, I'm not into that because it allows me to know when she is into something that I bring up a desire sexually or, or not sexually, she's being authentic and true. I never have to question, does she really want to be doing that? Is she actually feeling like it? And if you're a man that really cares about the woman that you're connecting with, you're, you, you want that to be the case. You want her to be fully there because it becomes less about the act that you do and more about the energetic presence that you have with one another. And that is uh, something that, again, to touch on the porn thing, porn is very in your head. You're not in your body. You're not feeling, you're not really experiencing. And that's one of the biggest differences I think uh, I, I found in my own, my own uh, experiences with porn is like, it was, you're just like, Ooh, and all the stuff, but I remember the end of it, like my, my, my cock didn't even necessarily get like fully hard all the time. I'd get kind of bored and like fluctuate. And that's never really been something that I've, I've had to struggle with. Um, and I was, I was like, huh, this is weird. Like, oh, maybe I'm just not finding the right videos. And the reality is as you start to wake up a little bit and perhaps have a realization that porn isn't as serving towards your satisfaction as you might originally have thought your body starts to kind of remind you of that fact. Mm. And if that does happen for anyone that's listening to this and you, you decide to, you know, just try it a little bit, you know, may, maybe watch a little bit less, see how it is to just use your imagination or God forbid, not even think about anything and just experience the pleasure of your own body, which I know for men, especially you're like, no, like that's automatically gay. I'm, I'm homosexual now. And it's like, oh, it's, it's you with your body and your cock. Like, it's great. Like, love yourself. <laughs> Yes. Um, so, so yeah, there's, there's a lot of fun stuff there. Yeah. And I think that is the same with women, definitely in terms Mm. of, you know, and I will hold my hands up. I've been very much in this, uh, 
way of doing things for many years, which was either being in some kind of fantasy and not being with my body or watching mm. something or thinking of somebody or whatever it was. And it can be quite confronting to actually bring it into your own body because then you can be like, huh, wait, what is this sensation? Or like, oh, now yeah. I'm getting visions from the past or I'm having mm. pain or I'm having pleasure that I don't know how to handle or receive. And all these things can happen or nothing can happen. You can feel very numb. Yeah and be like, wait, this is shit. This doesn't feel good. And Mm -hmm. yeah, so one of the things that I talk about is this numbness, pain, pleasure. So if you're feeling numbness Mm. in your body or nothing at all, you know, underneath that, underneath that, there's probably some sort of pain or memory or something that needs to be processed. It's that the numbness is covering you from and then underneath that is extreme pleasure and that's where you become mm-hmm. multi-orgasmic so if you're feeling numbness this is good you can be like oh look i feel numb i can be with that i can be numb cool that's i love cool. that i want to i want to steal that that that's really good mm. numbness pain the pleasure because it, it makes perfect sense i mean i even think about some of my my like more recent pleasure practices and um it's definitely like sometimes it's led to like kind of like emotional releases at times like I've just like felt a lot of like sadness or uh you know not really anger so much I think like more more sadness because that's something that that I had pushed down for the majority of my life until about like six months ago when I really started to open myself up emotionally and do do the work around that highly recommend it to any bros out there that that may be listening or boyfriends of the women that are listening uh tapping into your emotions is a game changer in terms of your overall satisfaction in sex and life in your relationship and everything because you feel more and it, 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 it's more everything's more real mm. uh and and yeah like like feeling allowing yourself to to be in that in that state of whatever is coming up and feeling okay. And that like, you know, make sure that you, you don't have like people like in the next door, just like chilling. And you're like, this is awkward. I don't want to be like crying. Well, um, you know, like someone's going to be like, bro, what are you doing? You okay, bro? Like <laughs> that, that would not, not be the safest um, of, of, of times to do that. And yeah, you can just set that container, be, be in the energy and just move through it because that is the stuff that you need to do to be able to get to the pleasure that, that, you know, Gina, Gina's talking about, uh, whether you're a man or a woman, like you have to feel mm-hmm. all of the different things. If you want to allow yourself to actually get to enjoy the full spectrum of the awesomeness that mm-hmm. uh, can be your own sexual expression, whether it's with yourself or is with a partner. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very key point. So if you are listening to this and you have a man in your life who you think could really benefit from listening to this, then do feel free to send it over um, and send them over to Gabriel's page as well. And YouTube, Mm. he shares all kinds of interesting stuff on this topic. Um, So this situation, this like, for me, the more I uncover of this, the more kind of weird it gets, because there there is definitely a lack of sex education we know that like you only have to watch the netflix series sex education to see (laughs) you know um at my school we didn't have anything like that in biology there's certain parts you know even when you're learning about the anatomy of the body it only actually teaches you about certain bits at a certain Mm. stage of history other bits about pleasure or like really anything were removed from the syllabus removed from the syllabus um okay i wonder why that was Mm. uh yeah so it literally cuts out most of what you know our reproductive systems are about in biology and then you know we are sexual beings and teenagers or even younger are looking we're on the scout for this kind of thing we're looking for these things so the only place really to see that and be curious about that is this in a lot of ways fucked up porn industry so this is a juicy 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 topic to get into and quite edgy and taboo um there's a documentary on netflix that i watched can you remember what it's called gabriel oh i remember i watched this one it was 
<laughs> it's like funny you remember the characters but you don't remember you don't remember the name of it i will uh, i'll double check the name um trigger yeah. warning like i didn't make it all the way through and it it disturbed me i also learned a lot from it and i realized yeah. personally that i've been was it hot girls wanted yeah that's it yeah oh yeah that that one was i felt really like bad and like i was i think when i watched it i still was watching porn yeah. i think i almost even remember like l- like looking like i like remember i looked up one of the chicks and i was just like i just couldn't even like what like, i was just like that's just weird like i remember that was the point where i was kind of going like a little back and forth or something i was kind of like oh like maybe take a bit of a break but i'm like oh no i want to do this because i wasn't doing it from a authentic like hey i don't want to do this i felt like i like shouldn't if, mm. if, if that makes sense yeah, uh, we, we can go more into that uh, a little later on. But yeah, like, like, tell me, tell me more about the, the, the experience you had when you watched that. Yeah, so I think, for me, I had always kind of okayed it with myself that, you know, well, they are getting paid for this, which is also a problem. Um, and mm. that they're, they're obviously choosing these women are choosing to do these things. And maybe they just really mm. like sex. And you know, that's okay. Yeah. Um, but actually having watched that documentary, it really showed the dark, dark underbelly of how yeah. women are kind of coerced to go for like model shoots or, um, you know, told they're going to get a free flight to somewhere nice or whatever it is. And then the reality of it is that they get there, they, yeah, they do get paid, but then you know, they're, they're made to do things that they wouldn't normally do. And they're made to look yeah. like they're enjoying it. And mm-hmm. oh, even talking about this is making my stomach flip. Yeah. And actually a lot of what is shown in the documentary is, is really the unprocessed emotions of men that com- are coming out in explicit, degrading, mm. angry, aggressive, like, ways and then yeah. obviously that is being demanded because people are getting more and more numb like we just mm-hmm. talked about numbness people are numb yeah. already and then they're trying to get something more trying to get something more and they're getting more and more weird in what they watch and and this yeah. is us included <laughs> in yeah that. for sure yeah 100 percent. and yeah and so there's this demand on women and this is very young women who don't probably have great self-esteem or self-love and are struggling in their life or don't even know yet. And it, oh, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, there's a lot of different directions we could go, but I think one of the the biggest ones are, because I used to have the the same thing where I'm like, oh, I'm only going to watch the chicks that are really into it. And then the other stuff, like, you know, where like the guys are just like obviously complete assholes and just like, I don't give a shit about this chick. And the chick is like, oh, this is terrible. But like, whatever, I'm going to pretend, but she's obviously like not enjoying it. Um, That, that never like worked for me. Mm. But the issue is, um, because there's probably, you know, maybe even some partners of, of, of the women that are watching this who are like, yeah, I watch it, but like, I don't watch the messed up stuff. I only watch this. And that was the the uh line that 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 I kind of fed myself but you have to look a little bit deeper Mm -hmm. into the like how can you really know that they're into it like who are you to judge Mm -hmm. their 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 turn on to know that like you don't actually know them and then let's say even you know playing devil's advocate here Mm -hmm. and shout out to Sophia because like we've had so because when I came in our relationship I literally was like threesomes polyamory porn let's go and she was like monogamy and (laughs) (laughs) we had a lot of a lot of conversations and you know explored a lot of different ideas and you know now we're 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 fully monogamous uh don't watch porn and um you know obviously like not polyamorous or anything like that and but I do that out of choice I'm not like she's not like you must do this it's because what she said and the points that she brought brought up made sense uh Mm -hmm. and there's also been things that I brought up that she's like oh okay that that does make sense uh from her side to shift things slightly but the the big thing is on on the porn aspect at least these women let's say they're they're enjoying it the why behind their enjoyment of it they literally much be like i'm getting paid 10k to do this like crazy anal scene 
And that is why I'm into it. Like I'm going to, you know, get into this because I'm getting paid cash for it. Not because, wow, I am so turned on to have this like 12 inch, like crazy Python inserted into me right now, but I'm going to do it for the money or which is very, very likely almost, I think, I don't know the statistics on it, but if I like think back to a lot of like the scenes and where I, my brain, I was like, oh, like the the chick's so into it. She's down for whatever. She's really in the energy. She's just on Coke or on some other kind of drug. And if like someone is on a drug like that, they're just going to want to do whatever, but it's not real and authentic. It's not like them at home, you know, after their like husband comes home from work and she's like, yes, let's do this crazy stuff. Like that's not, that's not really connection uh, in that way. And it's not to say that you can't do kinky, freaky stuff and have very authentic embodied connection, but you want to do it from a place of, of love and respect. And it, I know it sounds weird to be like kinky, but with love and respect, but you literally can have those two things. Like Sophia and I have a very, um, you know, like intense sexual connection where like, I'm very much in the masculine and dominant. And she's very much in the feminine submissive role, but everything that I'm doing, I'm doing it from a place of like penetrating her with my love, not from a place of like, you're a piece of meat. I don't care about you. I'm just using you Mm. type, type of stuff that porn really puts out there into the world. And as you become more aware of your own sexual energy as a man, you realize that you can tap into your partner's energy as well. And you can feel if she's into it or not. You can't just get a blow job and be like, just do the thing. You're like, oh, you're not feeling it right now. And then she's like, no, no, no. So you're like, babe, like, come on. She's like, well, I'm feeling a little bit this about the relationship right now. I'm feeling worried that if I say no, then you're going to break up. And like, these are the conversations that you need to have with a woman that you really care about. So you can actually fully be invested in, in the relationship from both sides and show up and meet each other where mm-hmm. you're connecting, not just through your genital organs, but also through your hearts and the other energy centers of your body. Cause that's real satisfaction and, and, and real embodied authentic sex, um, yeah. from my perspective. So yeah, I know it's a lot of different things. I'll let you <laughs> and hashtag multi-orgasmic. Like if, if you are doing an act or like if you are Mm. in a relationship that you know if you're in a sexual connection that isn't really satisfying you on all levels it's more just like a physical act or a release or whatever chances are you you probably won't be multi-orgasmic or you know it's really when every element of you aligns and what you just said about how you know sometimes you need to adjust and be like oh I thought was it going to be into this but now I'm actually feeling this or this is coming up Mm -hmm. for me or like you know I'm feeling a bit unsafe in our thing or something you said a week ago or a year ago pissed me off realizing all these things this is like sacred sexuality because once you have that conversation you might have to stop what you're doing and have a really deep in-depth conversation which can be yeah. really annoying yeah you're um, like what my dick is getting up <laughs> uh, why but you uh, just you just gotta breathe you just gotta you, breathe you gotta be, go it. with the energy of it and if that energy yeah. is coming up that is sacred that is for a reason if you ignore that you numb and you go into like, right now I'm going to have to go into fantasy or a memory mm. or whatever to, to get there. And it's unsatiating. And actually, yeah. if we do have those conversations, so probably everyone listening can, uh, you know, can get this one when, when you have like a really in-depth conversation and you have like kind of makeup sex after it, or you mm. have like really tender kind of like crying sex after mm. it or whatever cry gasms are the best like <laughs> like ladies out there like if you haven't like cried while orgasming for your man then you probably aren't diving as deep as you can like it's such a beautiful thing to be able to witness from the masculine when your woman is 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 being so vulnerable in that way and is like processing um you know any trauma any 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 fears insecurities that may be coming up in that moment and it's displaying that to you and you're able to hold the masculine pillar like through your cock like whether you're penetrating her or not even during that time just to just to support her in that energetic space is mm-hmm. is a very mutually healing thing and i think a lot of women are like i look ugly when i cry or i'm just not sexy or anything like 
a man, an embodied man or a man who is dedicated to showing up fully in his sexual power, he wants to receive his woman in her own full sexual power, or at least be on that journey. And those types of expressions during sexual connection are huge steps towards that. And just building the intimacy, because that might lead to your man, then later on feeling comfortable enough to express some insecurities he may have, because just because we're dudes and our dicks get super hard, it doesn't mean that, you know, our hearts are like made of stone. Like we still have emotions. We still have insecurities. We still have things that we we want to share with our partner but we might not feel like that's allowed or that it's okay and it's really important i i and this is through my own experience with sophia she's done such a beautiful amazing job of um owning how beautiful it can be to express emotions and truth in a raw authentic manner and i thought i did that already on my own mm. but the the levels in which she's been able to do that have really elevated my masculine's ability to, to also meet her in that way. And I feel like there's a power in, in, in a woman's feminine essence to open herself up yeah. to expression in that way to then allow the permission for the man who through society is very like, don't be a pussy, suck it up, bro. And mm-hmm. that, I mean, even for me, I'm still working on, on, on coding that. Yes, I've made a ton of progress, but it's a continual journey just to be like, I feel really sad right now. I feel really angry right now. I feel annoyed. Like all these things that just being like, I'm happy. I'm good. That's fine. Just be in gratitude. Like I still have those as well, but yeah, really uh, receiving what your, what your woman is able to, to express is a powerful experience for 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 a man to to witness and it can have uh huge huge effects for for him as well mm. 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 this conversation is so juicy if you are I love it if you are listening to this and you're like oh i've never thought of this please do share on your social media tag us tag gabriel as well um yes. it's your name isn't it gabriel calendar it is indeed. It is indeed. It's in the show notes. Um, and yeah, so one of the things I wanted to just touch on then that you went into is a little bit about, you know, these porn stars are, you know, getting paid for this. They're getting paid to look like they they might be a wonderful actress. You know, that's another mm. skill that they can have. Yes, they can be very much. This documentary really shows how, you know, it shows the movie of the woman doing a really good job of looking like she fully enjoys it. And yeah. the other thing is that she may be enjoying it a bit there, but then after there's there's probably not any aftercare. Oh my and- God, no. Here's <laughs> a water the- hut. Here's a water and a towel. Wipe the like cum off your face. Like, Ooh, <laughs> like um, it's literally like, it's just, yeah. Yeah. There's probably not much aftercare. Obviously, if a woman has opened herself up to all of that kind mm. of energy, not just the physical, but the energetics. Oh, God, yeah. After it, she might, and I've definitely done this, you know, had a sexual experience and after it needed like full on bear hugs to just like, and without that presence, um, this this documentary really shows how, you know, they are going to get the morning after pill or going Mm. to their friends and being like, oh my God, it was horrible. I'm trying to block it out of my mind. Yeah. (sighs) And, um, you you know, also then a lot of them have partners and then they maybe go home and have, you know, a very different experience because that's work. And that is very similar to modeling. You know, mm. uh, I would go and model and be all glamorous and doing the runways and whatever. I'd get home, take all my makeup off, put my pajamas and slippers on. And that that's my normal self, you know? Yeah. It's like, that's work and you're getting paid for that. And this getting paid for it thing can also cause a lot of problems because when a man, we've had this conversation before, when a man is like, oh, I really want to do this. And it's like, wait, all these other women that I normally have sex with on screens um they're always up for doing this stuff where's Mm -hmm. these women that are up for doing all this stuff and it's like they're getting paid for it that that that's one we should dive into because like you know that that can still get triggered that can still get triggered in me and it's so annoying too because i've done so much freaking work and like looked at my shadows looked at my stuff and i still have shit that comes up and i'm just like really 
Like, come on. I've been showing up on this stuff for so long. But, you know, in those moments before we get into it, like you just have to take a moment and look at the progress that you've made and understand that it is a, you know, a long-term multi-month, multi-year process, especially I've had 19 years of the opposite. Mm -hmm. That, that is a lot. And I've had two years of not watching porn. And I would say about six months at this point of letting go of the other, even more interesting thing, because you can let go of watching porn, but then you still might have, or be using sex as like a crutch to be like, Ooh, well, okay, maybe I'm not going to watch the porn, but then I'm going to put all this pressure on my partner to do all the things or perform in the energetics that I desire. And if they they don't do that, then it's going to bring up all this other shit show of things that I'm like, Ooh, I'm not receiving this. Ooh, I'm feeling like I'm not getting um, what I, what I really want there. And I'm so, I'm so grateful that I, at this point, actually have the tools and the processes to be able to move through that. But Mm. it's, it definitely hasn't been pretty all the time as well. Mm. Like there've been times where like, I've like really messed up in that and you have to, and this, you know, goes, goes to the women as well. Like if you have men that are going, that are in relationship with you, that might be going through this, don't expect them to just be like, all right, kumbaya, like I'm, I'm all good. Like you have to be willing to, to, to show up in that process for them to call them out in a loving way, not in a nagging way of like, Oh, why are you doing this? Why don't you just do that? Be like, Hey, like, I, I, I think you, you need to talk to me about this. Like, how can I support you here? Um, well also, you know, like not mothering them, but it's, it's sort of holding that, um, the feminine, but like the strong feminine, but also trusting in his masculine to be able to rise above it and giving him the opportunity uh, to show up there. But yeah, like the the, the letting go of <laughs> all the porn stuff and, and the shadows and then it going into other, other, you know, areas, it, it's a process. It's mm-hmm. definitely, it's definitely mm. a process there. And um, yeah, so like, the phys- it's a little bit I mean I, I talk a lot about food and mm-hmm. you know health and weight and it's a little bit like you know if you've eaten junk food or McDonald's or like sugary carby kind of not organic crappy things for years and years and years and then all of a sudden you're like nope um and so you might have <laughs> like a period of um doing the opposite and then you might be like oh I really want that thing and and it's okay you know like it is okay to just it has to come from like a deeper place than just willpower um yeah yeah and and when it does then it's it's full steam ahead and it's much easier to do and and of course not shaming ourselves when well in this topic maybe one day or night it's like fuck it I'm just gonna watch my favorite porn or whatever Mm. it's okay it's not like the end of the world um and also if you do give up watching that like I know in myself I I still have the files available in my brain right yeah no the the random like this is the best thing sorry to interrupt your thought but like Mm -hmm. you'll probably relate to this and other people who like might be listening and stop watching porn if you get like, for me, it's like, if I get stressed or I have like a tough day on the poker tables or something and like, normally it'd be like, Oh, go watch some porn. Like it's fine. And like, I'll, I'll, I'll see, I'll see the the process in my brain still come up, but it's so much weaker now because it's mm-hmm. been two years, but it's still there. Or sometimes Sophia, like I'll be like annoyed at her or something like some like mini little like discussion fight thing we're having. And, and then like my brain was like, it'll start like playing like a random, like little bit of a clip. I'm like, no, fuck off. And then I'm like focused back in on the conversation. So like, I don't know if that comes up for you at all. Yeah, I guess. I mean, I, I teach on a alcohol free course where I Mm. teach self-love to people who are trying to get alcohol free or have had alcohol dependency. And it's all very similar, you know, something comes up and you're like, oh, I want a glass of wine. It's the same thing. It's the brain wanting to cover up the thing that's really going on. Mm. And this taps so deeply into self-love, you know, when you can be with those things and not shame them and not be perfect and not be there yet and not be the finished article and still have shit coming up and be like, I can be with that. I don't actually have to just go and numb it or, you know, throw some, go and spend a, thousand pounds at online shopping or go and drink a bottle of wine or go and have unconscious sex with someone or go watch porn it's all kind of the Mm -hmm. same 
thing. So one thing I just wanted to talk about is, um, I, I don't know if I've ever talked about this publicly, but it just feels like Ooh, you and I are talking right juicy, now. So I'm going in. Juicy. Let's go, I'm going Gina. In. I've definitely talked about this <laughs> in some of my smaller groups. Um, so my ex-partner now, Vincent, um, we had been lovers since we were like, I was 20. So it's uh, a good innings of life, probably like half of my life, 16, 17 years. And um, that was all always like the most powerful aligned sexual connection that I'd ever had. And so mm. any time at that point of orgasm or like, you know, if I was watching some porn or I was having a pleasure practice or I was with someone else sexually, my mind would flip to the files of Vincent and I, which wow, okay. is, and before I was more conscious to this, I was like, oh, I would kind of shame myself because I'd be like, that's not good. But I did it and it was really fun. Yeah. Um, and so over the years, I've become more conscious to this and especially in the last few years, because I've been really diving in on the pleasure practice front. And mm. I would notice that, you know, I could be doing like this whole self-love practice, beautiful music, candles, all the things, ah, la, la, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. <laughs> all of a sudden my mind will like flip into fantasy, into dark kind of kinky weird shit. Yeah. And then that would be orgasm. And mm. I was like, interesting. Do I want that? Is that really what I want? Do I want to stay with my body? Like, what is that about? And it was kind of frustrating and annoying for me. Um, yeah. And yeah, so last year, I in at the start of the lockdown, I decided to let go of all male connections and call in my one. And so I had all these conversations. And one of the things that needed to go was this like, always thinking of Vincent every time I orgasmed. Mm. So I did this whole thing of like reprogramming my thoughts to be with myself, be with my body. Yeah. So the reason I'm talking about this is because, you know, sometimes even with a partner, your mind could go to like mm. some pinky porny thing. Mm -hmm. um, and that's been a whole process to like reprogram my mind to like be present rather than in fantasy so, yeah yeah I love that share yeah thank you for for being open about that I know especially especially on a pod um yeah. but I, I feel like a lot of you know women will, will get a ton of value from that though because everyone has has their own stuff whether their, their mind shifts to fantasy and sex or they're like really wanting to like cheat on their partners or because they're not feeling satisfied like whatever it may be and in my opinion it all comes from a place of if you're not getting what you truly need on like a base level, then your, your body or your mind tries to give it to you, mm -hmm. um, in another, in another way. So my response to that would be like, if, if, you know, we were doing like a coaching session, for example, and you're like, Hey, this keeps coming up when I'm like connecting with my boyfriend. And I think, think of Vincent, well, think about how you feel or how you felt in those situations with him in, in the actual reality. And then you probably weren't feeling that in the connection with, with these, with these other partners or when you're having your own self-pleasure, but that doesn't mean that you're not capable of it. You obviously figure out how to tap in to that pleasure, to that connectedness, to that sense of, um, you know, correct me if I'm wrong here again, you know, when I'm saying just what, what I believe that it would be, mm -hmm. um, is that that sense of, of fullness or oneness or a presence within your mm -hmm. own body, your own energetic self, your own pleasure your own orgasm orgasmicness and that i think as humans is what we really desire and want at the end of the day that's what i've had to do on on my end to let go of the like i want this thing and this way and this is the best and everything else is like good but like this is what i really want yeah uh and like you know like yeah, I'll, I'll be up front I'm, i never want to be like i am jesus and i saved myself I'm and i'm perfectly <laughs> fixed yeah i'm i'm there there's no more work i'm i'm the savant coach just like every other savant coach that says there's a savant coach um i what's a sure savant as hell coach? i i guess i would say like savant coach in my mind would be like the guy that's just like yeah i know everything mm. i'm ascended 
I, I am the, the, the full master of, of every single urge, every single energetic. I have no more shadows and I just mm-hmm. am the masculine pillar completely and fully. I don't, I don't personally believe that the journey ever stops. I just think you can keep getting to higher and higher levels mm-hmm. of, of, of mastery around that. And, you know, for me, I also accept and, and take on the fact that I've made so much progress and there's so much value that I can be able to bring to, to countless other men out there. But it doesn't mean that I need to stop growing or I need to stop evolving um, on my own. And like, you know, sometimes I'll still get a little, a little trigger. I'm like, it was, it was probably, I think it was like today when Sophia and I were in, were in the sauna. Um, I was even like, oh, like I was feeling like a little like bum that like, you know, I didn't like, she didn't want to like have like a connect in the sauna at that time, but you know, for she, she won't mind me sharing. Like she, she doesn't like the, like the, the, the it's like too sweaty essentially like for her person. I'm like, I don't care. Like I'm good. Um, and you, <laughs> and it, it, it's one of those situations where I can be like, oh, I really want this. Or I can also look at the fact of all the other amazing things that we have and not be in my head of like, Ooh, I'm, I'm in a place of lack of not receiving this thing in the moment. She also is like, yeah, maybe at another point that could shift, but just right now. And she's also like starting her like moon pretty soon or like boobs are getting sore. And like, you know, all the women out there know it's like, Oh, like that time you're like probably not feeling quite as juicy or it can be a little bit more volatile. And that's another thing. Get your man to understand your cycle, know where you're at on it, be able to, you know, adapt to the different energies uh, and really be clear with him. But another conversation. Uh, and and love yeah, that just, point. love it. Thank you. Love that point. Very, uh, very important. Very, very, very key. Your man will also be very happy that he understands it. And he's like, oh, okay. This is why this is, this is working. Slash get that on your vision board. If, if that's something you want to call in. Very true. Very true. And don't be afraid to educate your man as well. I, uh, I've received much education from, from Sophia on, on the feminine and I'm very grateful for it because it helps me to understand women so much better. And I'm like, Oh, now I get this stuff. Okay, cool. I can help all the guys that I work with understand the women they're in relationship with. So things are a hell of a lot more easy. Yeah. Equally on that, I just want to say, mm. if you are a yes. woman right now, and I've had this come up with some of the single ladies that I coach, if you're if you're a woman um, and you are listening to this conversation and being like, wow, this guy knows so many things and cares so much and is so aware and introspective and holds space and says thank you for sharing and like all this cool stuff if you (laughs) are desiring a man who can meet you at the level of like personal development and care and like sight that someone like Gabriel has and yet you're kind of like dating men who are not that please know you can have that. You can manifest a conscious man to meet you on all of these levels. And that is out there and that is possible. And, you know, I've sometimes just given that little reminder and then a woman has gone on to be like, oh my God, I've just manifested a man who's into Mm. conscious relating or speaks authentically or, you know, just saying. No, that's a great thing to bring up. And, and I even want to add on to that to do another add on to the add on, which is don't necessarily go into the, the feminine fantasy of what this conscious man is going to be. Sure, write out you know your list with all the points, but be really aware of what the important like big factors are and the other things be a little bit okay to possibly adjust on. Cause I, myself, I'm a freaking massive perfectionist and um, porn did not help in terms of making me even more of a, like I did exactly this in these ways through the old and graining, but you don't want to um, for, for the, the, the feminine perspective, you don't want to fall into the fantasy of like, I need the absolute perfect man, or mm-hmm. I am going to settle. Instead, you want a man who is committed to showing up every single day to improve himself and is willing to look at his shit. He may not be where you want him to be in terms of the relationship. Cause even Sophia and I, like we've talked about this. Like if I wasn't as committed and dedicated to continuing to up level myself and be the best version of who I am, I, you know, like, I don't think that our relationship would still be like our, our marriage would be where, where it is right now. We might not be together. We might be divorced because the reality is 
if you're not willing to do the work, it's not, it's not going to change. Even, even if you may be at the same level and you're like, wow, I met this guy, but then he's like, I'm good. I am not shifting. I'm not evolving. I'm not growing. And then two years, three years go by. And let's say you're very dedicated to that growth. He's not going to be able to meet you and he's not going to desire to meet you. So like that, that desire for growth is I think a huge factor versus if he loves going on, you know, four hour hikes um, and you really like staying at home and, and watching Netflix all the time, maybe you can find a balance there. If you're both meeting each other on the important in the important aspects of, of the relationship. So I just want to make sure that your, mm -hmm. your, your women and listeners don't fall into the trap of like waiting for the, the, the Ryan Gosling um, from, from the notebook, who is exactly that character. Um. <laughs> yeah. It's true. The willingness, the willingness. And just from uh, past uh, experience, so willingness is also a multi-layered thing in relationships mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. someone can be willing to, to change and evolve, but also like their nervous system needs to be willing because sometimes yes. <laughs> they're yes. like, I want to do this, but I literally cannot. I am zoned out. No, <laughs> <laughs> that's the masculine. No change. Yeah. Anyway, we digress. Um, I've totally forgotten what we were talking about. I have one more point I want to add to that, actually, Please do. Um, which I think is another really important one. Again, I, I just love to call myself out my own shit. I, I kind of I feel like it makes me up level more. So especially when I can put it publicly on a podcast, because then I can look back and be like, hey, did I work on that? And I'll be like, yes, I did. Um, is is are you as, as we'll keep it you know related mostly to your women, but this applies to me as well from the masculine are you fully embodying what you're desiring to receive from either a future potential partner or from your current partner? So are you really like, if, if you want to have a man that is just like so dedicated to growth, an amazing communicator, um, you know, loves uh, fulfilling every desire of yours in the bedroom and riding your, your different feminine waves and where you are in your moon cycle uh, and, 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 you know, taking you out on lovely dates every week and, you know, spoiling you, like all these things. Are you truly embodying the energetic of that towards him in the same ways that of like all of his desires? And if you're not, doing that, but you're wanting to receive the other thing, are you actually maybe complaining or being like, oh, woe is me, I'm not receiving this thing when you're not actually there yourself? And how can you really receive what you desire if you yourself are not in that energy? You're not going to be an energetic match and it's actually going to push away the thing that you really want. So I feel like, again, I speak from experience. Like I've been, I had times in Sophia and I's marriage where I'm like, Oh, I like really want this. And like, I want, I want our like sexual connection to be even more fiery. And like, if I'm just like, boom, then like, let's just dive into it. And then, but wait, am I fully penetrating her as deeply as I can in her heart, making her feel even more safe than I currently am? Um, you know, like showing up for her and all of her desires, taking her out on the dates uh, and, and, and all those things that she really loves. And the reality is, is I was like, oh, I can do more. Mm -hmm. I can do more to show up in that regard. And then you do that. And then you just have to not be like, now you do. It just seems to be, a, hey, this is my desire. I'm owning it. And now I am taking the action to be the person that is being the best version of who I can be and showing up fully. And then you just have to trust in, mm -hmm. in the universe after that point. Wow. I actually half zoned out during that because I got <laughs> such a light bulb. <laughs> I was like, I love it. Bing! Hold on a minute. Wait. La, 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 like all the cogs went. So I'm yes. Just, yes to that. Thank you, Gabriel. So good. My so, pleasure. Um, yeah. I'm gonna do a little bit of journaling there. Um, Ooh. so always some Gabriel magic. Always, always, every time we talk. <laughs> um, mm. and uh, honestly, you are an angel in my life. I've told you this many times, but I want to just mm. mention it again because when we first met, I was freshly out of a relationship and we met and just instantly connected through dance. We hung out loads yeah. and we had so many interesting conversations and mm -hmm. at that point I I genuinely 
thought I was really I am really good at communicating but you (laughs) hold you held a space for me to learn how to communicate on a completely new level Mm. and that is massive um you know I learned so much from you basically and you were Mm. and are an angel in my life so I'm I'm so grateful for you oh thank you thank you so much for that definitely definitely receiving it and uh you know i i've also like while well receiving that because it's important men you have to receive compliments don't just be like thank you but you have to like take it in be like okay i feel that but i also do really want to say i mean you, you had a massive impact on me as well like you you were i think the first real solid example of like an empowered feminine woman uh in in my life during during that time and to just really get to dive in and have so many different kinds of conversations and, and, and chats and just being like, wow, like, okay, you really hold the space, hold your truth, but are willing to question and, and, and look at things, but you weren't coming from a little, a little girl energy really in anything. You just sort of were like, Hey, this is me. This is where I'm at. This is what I'm feeling. This is what I think. And being able to experience that and see that in a woman was really powerful for me. And I think it was a, a big proponent of leading to uh, me really being able to appreciate my, my wife, Sophia, and the energy that she's, she's able to bring and how great of a match we are for one another, even, even when shadows or triggers or whatever may come up to, to, to understand the, the, the quality of woman that that I've managed to marry um you know like you you kind of inducted me a little bit into that into that energetic and I've, I've talked to Sophia about that before but you know definitely want to shout you out publicly uh you. for for that Gina oh thank you um thank you thank you thank you receiving <laughs> <laughs> it's so mm. easy to skip over these things but we don't do we, we nope. Do. nope 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 Okay, so last last thing that I think is really quite juicy um, that we have talked about a lot is how to... Yes, I agree completely. That one. Boom, we nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> so I've definitely had friends in the past, clients now, you know, this goes on a lot where... There's a desire in the bedroom Mm. that somebody wants to meet and the other one doesn't and is not available Mm. for it. There's a boundary. I know that there's been this in your life and I know that you have kind of learned a process to kind of dive Mm. into what's really there, what that's really about and how to satisfy or satiate that in a more... Mm available conscious way do you want to talk anything about that yeah that that is a very juicy question I I must say Uh, I love I love that you brought it up though because every time I talk about something that I've had to work through and continue to work on it just further ingrains it into my soul and consciousness so I'm like sweet another opportunity uh I think that the big thing because for me it was like ooh, like this type of sex in this way that I've seen so much in porn um, was like the thing that I, that was like the ultimate for me in the bedroom. And especially like in the beginning of our relationship, um, with Sophia and I, like, she like sometimes would be down with that, but then other times she's like, yo, I'm not feeling it. Especially if my energy was off, which is totally on me where I'm like, Hey, do this thing. Uh, and like kind of like being scarce about, about the energy, which is just something I want to point out to if you know, you're a woman and there's something that you really want to do with your man and he's not interested in or vice versa. Like what kind of energetic are you bringing with it? Are you coming with the energy of like, if we don't do this, I am not satisfied. Mm. Or are you coming with the, the energetic of like, I really desire for you to do this to me or for, you know, if you're the man, like, I really want to do this to you. And people can pick up on energy, whether man or woman, especially though, if it's like, uh, cause you know, I have to go from my own experience. If you're, you're a man and then you're expressing a desire to a woman, if it's from like a needy place or like a non self source place where you're like, I need this, it's just going to be a turnoff. Like it just, it just dries everything up. It just doesn't, it doesn't or, really work. Or if you were the people pleaser, you might mm. get it, but not really connecting what you really wanted from it. And you don't get it anyway, which is kind of worse. Cause then you've kind of overstretched yeah. your partner and you're still not really getting satiated. 
And then you feel bad about it. That's the thing. If you have any level of consciousness, you're never going to really feel good if your partner like, I did the thing because I love you and I like don't want you to be disappointed. You want it to be like, I fucking did the thing. And that was awesome. Because then you're like, yeah, that was great. It was an experience. You both really enjoyed it. And um, to be able to get to that point, if you have you know a certain act, energy, whatever in the bedroom between you and your partner where it's not exactly in alignment, you have to really look at what does that act make you feel Mm. that's that's the game changer because bottom line there is no sexual act that just for the sheer uh, for the just the the little bit of emotion or the large amount of emotion that you can get from it um or the 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 act of it that is going to be just about doing it it's going to be oh wow this made me feel full this made me feel connected this made me feel safe this made me feel fucking dominated let's say like you're a woman you're really wanting to feel penetrated by your man or a man you're like wow i feel i feel so powerful i feel so in control Mm -hmm. um and there are so many ways to get to feel that through other sexual acts and Mm -hmm. the biggest thing as well it's not the act it's the it's the awareness in the presence so you can literally just touch your partner's arm and just be so like just intent fully on every single inch of her body that subtitles. you're touching subtitles gabriel is oh. touching his arm in a very no, subtitles way <laughs> gestibly looking at his arm beginning to activate his sexual energy like wait no that's too much for the podcast got it got to tone it down no don't uh. tone it down it's just if people are listening they might not be able to see you <laughs> Yeah, no, it's true. I know in my brain, it's like, I'm just like, I'm coaching somebody. I just go into like, there's always video. Love it. Love it. Uh, love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you for that. But like, really, and this is a conversation because I've continued to, to deepen this, the, the ability to bring the energetic presence as a man is everything in terms of what you're doing in the bedroom. So you can like, I'll, I'll give like a, 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 you know, like middle-ish ground example. Like if you're, um, again, okay. okay. I'll go to the women on this one. If you're going to get your ass slapped by a guy, all chicks pretty much like to get like a little bit of a spanking in some way, shape or form, or at least like a little butt tap, something like that. And if a guy just like randomly goes up to you and he's just like, like out of nowhere, you don't know what's going on. It's pretty much never going to be a turn on for the woman. It could (laughs) some cases, sure. But like, I'm talking about like, really just like, you're like, busy working like you have your headphones on it's just like out of nowhere yeah so there's no there's no lead up there's no like ooh, like later i want to like spank you or like whatever none of that versus if he you know like caresses you just a little bit like on the small of your back or like rubs just a little bit like on your butt before and then he does it like prepares you warms you up and has the intent of like wow like i'm doing this thing he's fully there he's not just doing it's not just going for it that is an energetic it evokes an emotion and evokes a feeling and a connection and that is such a huge thing to 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 bring into to anything that 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 you may be doing and then going back to the like how you can be able to go into the feeling of what you want from these acts that you and your partner might not be in alignment on is just start really basic just, just start with just, just touching, touching their skin, narrating, you know, just, just putting my, my, my finger on, um, uh, on my arm there. And, and, but really being connected in that, like how deep can you dive into that? Could you, could you imagine, or at least think of that feeling that you get from the act or the idea of that act, but then start to let go of the act and be present in terms of what, of what you're doing. And it might not happen the first time. It might take multiple times of, of, of really exploring in that. And it might not be the, the, the finger on the skin. It might be making out or it might be like what, whatever else you want to do, but it doesn't have to be in this like constrained, mm-hmm. regimented. This is the thing. Cause that's why I personally don't believe that having a kink is actually a healthy thing in the long run for mm-hmm. a relationship because it puts so much pressure on that one thing and it puts it above everything else 
that you're going to, you're going to be doing in, in terms of your sexual connection. I don't think that's healthy because it actually limits not even like putting the pressure on your partner. It limits yourself. If you're the person with the kink, cause I, you know, I used to be like more like, Ooh, like this is the thing. And I still love my things, but it's not from a place of if I don't have this, eh, it's not, it's not, it's not really that not good. Satisfying. Yeah. Yeah. It's not yeah. satisfying. Yeah. 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 And um, yeah. So it's like, it is, if you're, if your sex, your sexual experiences, your energy is expansive, then you're likely to be having gourmet sex. If it is like, contracting like oh mm. that's getting smaller or that wasn't great you know if it's like a contracting yeah. thing, then it's kind of junk food sex yeah and um another thing when you were to- when you were kind of naming those things that could be underneath like maybe mm. you want to feel powerful or maybe you want to feel mm. submissive or maybe you want to feel um safe or and and another thing is if there's, if there's an act that someone wants to do and the other person doesn't want to do, uh, underneath that could be <clears throat> that they're looking for validation in that way. You know, like, actually, yes. actually, that could be like an undercurrent of underneath all of this, if I get to do this, then I am deeply validated in my expression hundred percent. I mean, I resonate with that. Like, I th- I'm glad you brought that up. Cause like in my brain, I'm like, Oh, there's so many things, but that, that is another, another point to it, which is just like, Ooh, this makes me feel loved. This mm. makes me feel like you, you, you're dedicated to me, um, you know, fully in, in, in that regard, or it could just be like, wow, like I am honored by the feminine, like a woman really like loves me because she's showing up in this way. And I will definitely say like from experience, if you can let go of the pressure of your partner having to perform this act or these acts in order for you to feel satisfied, you sometimes will be surprised at the openness or the shifts that can occur in terms of your partner being like, actually, maybe we could explore a little bit in terms of this, but they just don't feel safe enough to be like, well, if we do a little bit, and then I don't do everything, then you're going to be like, ah, oh, it's not good enough. And then they don't want to even deal with that. They don't feel like they could, they could come to you with that because you're like, I need you to do this. To and the hundred degree. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. It's a good point. It's a good point. Yeah. Okay. Well, this has been very juicy. I really, really mm. hope that um, something has sparked something. It's definitely sparked something for me that I'm going to go journal about. I love it. Um, but yeah, I really hope that this conversation has met our listeners to you in a way that is expansive and you get to think about things differently and, you know, think about these systems that we are learning sex from and how that, you know, may, might not be the most effective thing. And also definitely like releasing shame. And I hope that this kind of open conversation where mm. we've shared quite a lot of stuff that normally doesn't get talked <laughs> about unless you live in Bali. Um, yeah. I really hope that it's given you some permission to think that, you know, your kinks and weird things that you're into is okay. You know, it's it's all good. It's all gravy. We all have them. And your struggles, it's okay to struggle. It's okay to have triggers. It's okay to have shit come up. It's Mm -hmm. about how you process it and you deal with it and learning those tools and like working with someone amazing like Gina, if you're a woman or someone like my wife, Sophia, like they, they, these women know how to teach what you need to do to move through it and to do it in like a healthy way. And I'm so, I, I feel so like blessed to like have women like you in my life that are really helping other women out there to like, show up, step up and be their best selves. Like it's a beautiful thing. So, yes. You. Oh, and last thing I want to say for any, uh, I guess like women that are listening who have partners or random guys are listening to this, you can 100% have like 50 orgasms, non-ejaculatory moving your energy. Your cock will still throb like you're having uh, an orgasm, but you just don't shoot anything out. It's freaking amazing. Um, that's also something that comes from moving on from porn and being able to get in touch with your sexual energy and really feel in your body. So there's a lot of benefits 
of not watching porn and women make sure that you talk about these possible benefits to your man and not just like, this is bad. This is messed up. This makes me feel that way. And that can be a huge uh, game changer for them because you don't want to, you know, like be like, I'm going to whack you over the head with the stick. You want to feed them the carrot. Like you want to, to give people something that they can look forward to. And that's the only reason why two years out, I'm still not watching any porn because I chose from a place of, Ooh, this is going to give me more pleasure. This is giving me more satisfaction in my life. So I think that's an important uh, mm. consciousness to have when you're, when you're bringing this up. Cause I feel like there's going to be a lot of women that are like, Ooh, like this is possible for men to like not watch porn, or maybe they don't even know if their partners are watching it or not. It might be doing it without, you know, saying anything you don't know. And like, you want to open that conversation if you want your relationship to be as juicy as possible. And I think that's something every woman and man desire. Mm, that last two minutes was very full and, <laughs> and packed full. Of <laughs> and yes, we like carrot. So crowd it out with something better rather than just removing it much better. Yeah. Amazing. Gabriel. Thank you so much. You mm. are a wonderful podcast guest and friend thank and you. human in this world. And I can't wait to see you in person in Bali soon. Yes. Cannot wait. It's going to be amazing. We can all go to Syed House. Look at the yeah. views. And eat sushi. And yes. if you haven't already checked out Sophia's um, pod on a few episodes back, it's the Rebel Queen. Um, it's also amazing. And you'll get to marry them up as I got to marry them together one time. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> Thank you, Gabriel. Be okay to receiving that desire in other ways. Don't be so regimented on it needs to be this way or else. Be open to the universe providing that which you desire by letting go of the I have to get it now in this perfect way from your construct of, of your mind. And, and just, yeah, just, just be open to receive, let go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Basically. Yeah. That's that. <laughs> it's a big one. I, I feel you though. I mean, I definitely, I definitely feel you. You know, I, I still have like wounding and, and triggers around the like, Oh, like, am, am I in the perfect relationship? Is, is it right? Is it all that? And it's like letting go of the perfection and just, just being here and accepting all of the amazingness that, that I do have and all the, the ways that, 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 that I am that, and that really like actually truly matter to me. And like, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a beautiful journey. It really, it really is. Like I, I wouldn't change anything. Cause I'm just like who, who I am as a person, you, you probably feel the same way. Like, you know, like you, you and Vincent, right? Like where you are now, the awarenesses, the experiences, the perspectives, I mean, th those are invaluable. You mm -hmm. can't, you can't, you know, once you know, you know, and you're like, of course, I would never want to give up this consciousness because I feel like consciousness and awareness is, is like the lifeblood of, of why we're here. It's like to, to be human is to expand what we perceive and, and what we know. And like, it's such a, a beautiful journey to be on and like when you can be with somebody that accelerates that whew, that's that celebrate that yeah 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 it's kind of frustrating when it's like subconscious because it's like you only know what you know in your conscious mind yeah so yeah obviously bringing more awareness to it but it's almost like when it is that wounding playing out you well me i am kind of blind to it it's like that part of your brain actually does switch off when you're in that response mm. I honestly feel like this is this is similar to like Sophia and I getting getting a couple coach I would get a relationship coach just for you so whenever you might consider entering into relationship with someone else work with someone who knows your triggers knows your woundings and you're like hey I met this person. This is what I'm feeling. These are the behaviors that are being exhibited. This is what I'm feeling like I want to do. What are your thoughts on this? And still do whatever the hell you want, of course. Like no one's going to be like, you can't do this, you know, or you can't do this. But getting that outside perspective of 
are you living in full integrity around like what you're really trying to bring in? Or are you starting to go into another habit pattern? There's no, that, that's why we get support, right? That's why you have VAs, why Sophia has, has a whole team. Like, like everybody, you have someone that helps with your taxes. I, you don't have to become the, the perfect tax expert just to get the same result um, that somebody who was like that uh, was able to get. You just hire somebody who's amazing at it so you can continue to put your time and energy into helping all these women out there, out there in the world. And I feel like from my perspective, like that could be something that's really valuable to you because obviously relationships take a lot of time, money, energy, investment, everything from your side. So you want to be really selective on it and make sure that you have the highest chance of success in terms of making that that, that, that right choice there. So that would be a reflection that, uh, that, that I'd want to share. Mm, love that. Thank you for that reflection, Mr. Gabriel. It is my pleasure. Ms. Oh, Gina. thank you so much for this. So where Great. can people find you? They also can find me at my website, gabrielcollander.com. And then all the social medias, Instagram, Facebook, um, YouTube, probably TikTok, just under Gabriel Collender, G-A-B-R-I-E-L-K-O-L-L-A-N-D-E-R to the show notes. And looking forward to seeing you there. Woo! Thank you, Gabriel.